Faith that works. You know, faith has this, uh, like a, like a description of it being like a supernatural, super spiritual type of thing. You know, and and really, faith is a very practical thing, and we all live by faith. Uh, we have uh, applied our faith to so many things in the natural, because faith pretty much is just believing. And there are some things that we have believed to be true, and for us, it's a reality. It's because uh, it's, we put our faith in that, you know. Like, for instance, your name. Your name was given to you, but you accepted it as being you, right? Like, my name's Randy. Well, it wasn't Randy. It's a little confusing here. <laughs> my mom named me Randolph, and then uh, somehow, when she went to register my name, it ended up being Randy. So my baptism certificate says Randolph. My uh, birth certificate says, says Randy on it. So it got things confused. So when I got and joined the military, they, they said, hey, who is, I mean, are you Randy or are you Randolph? I said, well, everybody calls me Randy. You know, that's what I've accepted, right? That's my reality. I'm, my name's Randy, you know? So they went through this whole rigmarole to change my official name to Randy. You know, even though my given name was Randolph. Right here at this hospital, that certificate says Randolph on it. So, but my name now legally is Randy, but I kind of like Randolph, you know, now. <laughs> now that I'm older, <laughs> I kind of like that name. Randolph. Yeah, Randolph, Randolph Christopher Gomez. See, that's, that's, my, that's my real name. But I named my son Randy. That's his real official name. <laughs> I didn't name, name him Randolph. <laughs> so, uh, but we place belief in that. So that's who we are. So if somebody calls me, like, a lot of people call me Richard because my brother's name is Richard. And they both start with R, so they get us confused. They call me uh, Richard a lot. But, you know, I don't, I usually won't say nothing about it because I know they meant Randy, you know. But that's my name, Randy. I put my faith in that. That's my confidence there. That's what I believe to be true. Now, faith was given to us for a very special purpose. God said that every person that comes into this world has been given a measure of faith. And we all know what that measure is because the Bible clearly tells us what the measure is. Does anybody know what it is? It's so small. Anybody know? Little bitty thing. You can't hardly see it. But it's so small. And Jesus described it as this small little thing. And that's the measure we've been given. A little seed, huh? A mustard seed. And mustard seeds are small, real small. Uh, kind of like carrot seeds, huh? Carrot seeds, they're, man, they're tiny. <laughs> you know, that's the way a mustard seed is. But a mustard seed can produce a humongous tree. Yes. Well, it's amazing that that small measure of faith that God has given us, every human being has this. It's been given to us. Now the purpose of that faith is for us to use it to believe in God. That's the purpose of it. That's why God gave it to us. But we don't have to. We don't have to use our faith to believe in God. God does not force us to believe in Him. He doesn't force He wants us to use our own free will, which is another great gift that God has given us. And I know that Free will, none of us are willing to give that up. We want to make our own choices in life. And that's what God has instilled in us. Because He's really forcing us to believe or not believe in Him. That's why He gave us choice. Yeah. But some people are using faith, the measure of faith that God has given to them. They're using their faith to believe some crazy, crazy stuff. It has no basis in reality. Right. It has no, no basis in the advancement of humankind. They're believing stuff that is totally a lie and applying their mustard seed of faith to that lie and then that lie ends up steal, kill, and destroy. Oh, That's where it ends up. Hallelujah. But they put their faith there. Yes. Their God-given faith 
They put it into something that is a lie. Totally a lie. You know? And I know that a lot of people on uh, Facebook get in trouble when they say little things like, you know, about the gender issue. You know, the Bible clearly states that he made them in the beginning male and female. Yes. Yes. But we don't have to believe that. We're not forced to believe that. God is waiting for us to decide for our own selves if we want to believe that. Yes. Well, most of us do. <laughs> Praise God for that. Because that's based on reality, right? We know the reality is, in our culture, in our world, that the reality is male and female. You know, and it's uh, it's true about the, you know, the animal kingdom and stuff. You know, so it, that's God's intention. So I choose to put my faith in the fact that God created them male and female in the beginning. Yes. So to me, that's the reality. Now, do you have to believe that? Evidently, some people don't. Right? Some people just cannot wrap their heads around that idea that there's only two. From the beginning like that and the reason is they don't want to believe that there is a God because if you believe that there is a God then all of a sudden you, your thoughts on the things that you want to do that are sinful end up being exposed as being wrong and how many of us don't like to be wrong <laughs> yeah we all be right all the time right <laughs> Uh, we don't want we don't want somebody to come and tell us when we're wrong, you know, because we will sometimes fight for that, you know, and defend it, and then have to admit later on, yeah, I was wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we don't. But people in general don't want to hear it, you know. So they grab a hold of this idea that it's a lie from the devil, and the devil says, oh no, there's just there's more than two genders. Yeah, there's way more than that. Watch, look at the the psychologists and all them guys. They'll tell you, look, there's 23 genders. Yeah. Yeah, so the lie gets out there, and then some people believe that lie, and they end up being dominated by that lie. So now there's so much confusion in some people's lives about that issue right there, you know. And that's just one example. There are so many different issues that we, we could talk about, and every sin is a lie from the devil. But if you choose to believe it and apply it to your life, that sin will be reality in your life it will dominate and the devil will use it to kill steal and to destroy so i encourage you the god-given gift of making a choice examine the other god-given gift of your faith and where you're going to place it because it will produce faith is going to produce it'll produce if you believe something that's righteous and true It'll produce good results. But if you believe the lie, it's going to produce damaging results. Right. And you're not going to be able to handle it. Right. Because that one sin will take you way far, farther than you ever thought possible. You would think that that one sin would, would just be, you know, okay. a, a, one little event. No, no, it's a seed that's getting planted. That's right. And when that seed gets planted, it's going to produce, it's going to come up. And the, I mean, here in New Mexico, in West Texas, there we got them little sticker plants, the little thorn things, you know. Oh, my goodness. What are, what are those things called? The, the goat thistles? Heads. What? Goat heads. Yeah, that's a good name for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're terrible. Huh? The devil's a goat head, right? Yeah. <laughs> and they're devilish, man. They poke you, and then they got like a little poison on them. And it is amazing that they just grow up and it, it tricks you, huh? Yes. Yeah, first a little yellow flower, oh, so yes. pretty, you know. Uh -huh. Pretty little yellow flower comes out, you know, and say, ah, oh, that's nice, you know. And the next thing you know, it's all over the place and these goat heads, they, they like, overnight they seem to pop out, mm -hmm. you know. And then, when they dry up, they get loose and they get scattered all over the place, you know. And they cause so much damage. That's what happens exactly when you put your faith in sinful things if you make them your reality it's going to produce tremendously bad results there's going to be heartache hurt and pain so god it challenges us to make the good choice put your faith in him he will not lead you astray 
He won't take you places you don't want to go. God is so uh, such a, a, a gentleman about that that He allows us to choose our way. You know, He loves us. He wants to fulfill all of the desires of our heart, but we got our plant, our faith in Him. I wrote a note here that says that faith is active, it is practical, and it is real. That's what we're talking about this morning as we talk about faith. Let's read it in James uh, chapter 2, verse 14. He says, What does it profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, it is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Mm. You believe that there is one God? You do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Jesus. Amen. Faith is active. It is a very practical aspect of our lives. And we live by faith each and every day. The key for the believers in God, the key is to put our confidence and trust in Him in all aspects of life. And as we do that, we're going to produce the righteousness of God in this life. I was watching a movie about, uh, it's a documentary about Noah and Noah and the Ark and all that. And uh, you talk about having faith. Oh my goodness. I mean, can you imagine if God told you, hey, I want you to build this spaceship in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be about 30 feet tall. And here's the plan and all this. I want you to build this. And I want you to start on it tomorrow. He said, don't worry about the materials. I'm going to bring them. They're going to deliver them. Lowe's is going to come and deliver them to your backyard. <laughs> and he tells you to build that. And while you're building this ark, I want you to tell people that God wants them to make things right with them. I want you to preach to them and let them know that judgment is coming, but God wants you to be safe. And I'm building this spaceship right here. And we're all going to get in it. And we're all going to be safe. <laughs> Can you imagine the ridicule that you're going to get? Can you imagine the amount of faith that you have to put into that to say, wow, this is my reality. Wow, that's amazing faith right there. I don't know how Noah had all this faith. They'd never seen a bowl before. They didn't know what a bowl was for. And here he's building the ark, the humongous bowl, you know. And he caught all that ridicule, but he put his faith in that. And because he put his faith, it became real to him. So the reality was, his purpose was now. The things that he had to activate in his life and put into practical use were to build that ark. I mean, he had to go into the woods with maybe some big oxen or something and drag in those boards, uh, those big old logs that he cut down. And I don't know if he made them flat, but the pictures we see, the boards were flat somehow. How did he do that back then? You know, that's amazing. So God had showed him some things because he believed God, so God made a way. Amen. And somehow, this man and his sons were able to build this humongous thing and at the same time continue to warn the people and to, to let them know that God loves them, wants to rescue them right. because judgment is coming. Yes. And there is a rescue here. I'm here for you. And the message went out. See how practical that was? Yeah. But look at the outcome. Look what God can do when a person puts faith in Him. He can do way more than we think, you know? So God wants us to put our faith in Him. Our and then act it out in a very practical way. I know that religion comes in sometimes and makes faith look like a holy thing. and It's all about us. No, no, it's not. Faith is not about us. We're supposed to use our faith so that we could help other people. Look at the example he gave us right here. He says right here, if a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, wave at them as you go by. No. That's not what it said? No. <laughs> no. He didn't say that. He said, if someone who says to them, depart in peace, be warm to be filled, can you imagine hollering out the one, hey, I hope you all get some fire going over there or something. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, he's not saying that. No. He says, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. Jesus. What is the problem? See? That's not faith. Faith is action. Faith is stopping and helping somebody. Yes, thank you, Lord. Our, our faith needs to be very, very practical. And that's why it's so important, this thing out here. That is a that is a huge thing that is going on in that little box out there. Every time that we take of our own resources and we plant it in that box, these people are coming to a church and recognizing that Christian people are putting food out there for them. That is a great testimony of God's goodness. I know sometimes we get almost like robbed out there. <laughs> people take advantage and they take more than they need. The sign says, please take what you, what you can use and leave some for others. That's what the sign says. Yes. But some people take it all. You know? yes, yes. But that's not, that's not our call. Our call is not to monitor that and put up cameras. And somebody told me to put cameras and monitor it. <laughs> that's not our job. Yes. Our job is to give and to help and to be a help to people. You know? and, uh, and God will deal with them. Yeah. You know? that's, not, that's not ours to do. So we need to use our faith in our God, knowing that He provides all of our needs. And he equips us to do these good works. We have the equipment. We have what's necessary to accomplish these tasks. And most of the time, it doesn't even involve money. Most of the time, all it involves is a few kind words from our mouth. And it has a tremendous impact for the kingdom of God. Now, you may not recognize the effects that you're having when you share God's goodness. Because yeah, a lot of people kind of turn you off and say, ah, holy rollers, Jesus freaks, you know, uh, and maybe write you off that way, you know. But I guarantee you, it penetrates. Because the word of God, when it is spoken, it will penetrate the flesh. They may deny it, but they're going to remember that word. And they're going to recognize that down the road somewhere, maybe sooner or later is better, but it, whatever long it takes, they're going to recognize that that word was true. Yes. And when they recognize it as true and they plant their faith into it, they're going to get saved. That is the purpose. And uh, our, our faith is highlighted when we apply action to it. And we stop and say hi to that person on the side of the road that's got a sign up, you know. Or, or we, we stop by and, you know, I know a lot of these guys are like, that's how they make their living. That's what they do. I mean, we had a kid one time at the mission. Well, oh, this is something else. He, he, was a, he used to ride the trains. A young guy, like 18 years old. And he used to ride the trains from town to town then go beg in the towns, you know, and make pretty good money. So he got on a train because they chased him out of one town. So he got on the train and he, he was going to get off here. He slipped and his foot slipped in between the, the train thing. Mm -hmm. And then when it went like that, smashed all his toes. So uh, after the hospital, they brought him to us at the mission, you know. And the guy needed, like, I mean, a lot of time for recovery. Uh, well, you know, he, he heard the gospel <laughs> a lot because every meal you went to, you would hear the gospel. <laughs> and and he, he just kind of playing the game, you know, the religious game. And when he got a little bit better and he was able to kind of walk around, he got back into his old routine. And he got out, you know, begging again and, and actually making really good money because uh, he was renting a really nice uh, motel and had plenty of money and had nice clothes and all that. You know, he, that's how he made his living, you know. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't support that part because it's like taking advantage of people, you know. Uh, and he could have worked, you know, he could have worked and done that but instead of taking advantage of people. But what if, what if somebody really has a need? I think it's worth the risk. Yes. I think it's worth the risk, you know. I mean, most of us can do a dollar. And if a lot of people do a dollar, the person ends up with a pretty good amount of money, you know. Uh, if you find out that they're abusing it and they're buying alcohol or drugs and all that, well, I won't participate in that. I don't want to be an enabler. But if I don't know, I'm going to take the chance. And uh, do the good thing. That's right, thank you. And I mentioned, uh, I think a few weeks ago, about the guy with the wheelchair. I mean, this guy, to get there, I saw him go home. 
and I cannot believe it, he went several blocks all the way down Ross Street to go to his house. And it took, it probably took him an hour, hour and a half to get there, with walking and pushing his, uh, his, his wheelchair, you know. And so he gets out there, I kind of look at him and say, man, that's his job because he can't, he's, he's like this, you know, he, he can't do very much. He can't, he can't hold a job. And we know that the income that they give for disability is really not enough, you know. Right. So he goes and supplements his income this way. So if he's doing that, I feel a little bit better about helping him out, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe he drinks, I don't know. You know, I don't know that part. I didn't smell alcohol on his breath. But to me, that would be a kind of person that, that we, we could have an opportunity to help. So each opportunity that we have, I believe God wants us to plant that seed in there so that they, they can see our faith in action. Yes, Because yes. you know the old saying, and it's true, action speaks louder than words. Yes. So when we put action to it, it's going to have a dramatic impact on that person's life. So action, this, this is what faith is all about. It's, an, it's, an, uh, it's a verb, it's an action word, you know, that that needs to be uh, applied on a daily basis. So God wants us to do that. You believe that there is one God? We do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. Yeah, everybody believes that there is a God. And sometimes it takes a dramatic event for them to admit it. But just knowing about a God is not enough. Because we all know, everybody knows there is a God. Even atheists know, they deny it. But we all know, when it comes right down to it, we all know that there is a God, and we try to justify our lives by saying He doesn't exist, and we go through all this rigor and mold, but we all know that there is a God. The whole earth, all of creation, declares the majesty of a designer. We call Him our Creator, God. You know. So we know but they don't want to apply their faith to it. They have the head knowledge, they have an understanding, and they reject God. And that is a sad, sad situation to be in. We need to pray for this world because the devil has burned a lot of people's minds right. into believing crazy things. And he wants, to, he wants them to miss out on what God is doing for mankind. God wants them all to come in. God is sending us out right into their midst and living right in front of them. You know, we're not compromising our faith. We're living right. We're doing pretty good with our language and our thoughts and our actions. We're doing all that to glorify our Father. Yeah. And uh, it's a testimony to this world. And He's trying to reach them. Trying to reach them. And I know it's, it's a little bit harder because we don't see a lot of... Uh, a, a lot of return on our investment. <laughs> you know, we don't see all that. But we're going to, we are going to see it. God is going to allow us to see the return on our investment. We are in a time that now our faith in action is, is going to have a more dramatic impact on a wider scale. More and more people are going to apply their faith in the God that we serve. It is coming. And like, uh, Kylie was praying earlier, young adults are going to step out in front and lead a movement that's going to impact our entire world. We have uh, uh, nations all over the world that are tired of the tyranny. They're tired of, of dictators just telling them what to do, what they can and can't do. They're tired of it. They want freedom. And many are turning to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Even in Muslim-dominated countries, there's big movements, and guess who's leading the charge? The young people. So we are about to witness the dramatic effects of us planting seed all these years, living before our family, our friends, our co-workers, our schoolmates, all, of, all that seed that we have planted, we are going to start to see the fruition. I know it's hard to imagine, but these seeds in here are going to be filled for Sunday morning services. And we're going to be so happy. Because we're going to see people coming to be disciples to live the life that Jesus called them to live. You know? 
It's going to be an exciting time. So prepare for that in your hearts and minds because it's coming. We've been faithful with the little things. This little church here has remained faithful. We have not compromised. We have not, we have not uh, uh, tried to do some, you know, big performances or something to try to draw people in. We're not about that. We're, we're about being here for them and welcoming people into this church. And we're going to continue to do that. And because we've been faithful at doing that, God is going to bring more people in. You know, I want more people to come, not for the numbers, for their sake. Can you imagine? We have more people in here. We have less people in jail. Yeah? Yeah. Less people at the bar. You know, less people at the dance halls. You know, this. yeah, is that's, that, is that important? I'd rather all the churches and clothes be full and all the jails empty. Yeah. That's what God desires too. Yeah. So it's a coming. It really is a coming. So prepare to receive that and, and keep praying about that because, you know, we need to apply our faith to this. And then invite people to come to church. Let's put in action to it, you know. So let's, let's live by faith. Because it's impossible to please God without faith. So let's be pleasing to our Father by believing what He says. Amen. And then acting on it. Amen? Yes. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we love You so much. And we thank You for Your goodness and Your grace, Lord God. And we thank You for giving us that measure of faith. And we know, Father God, by, by earth's in a human's uh, standpoint, that little mustard seed seems so small and insignificant, but by your strength and power, it has a dramatic effect. So, Father, that measure of faith that you've given us, help us to, to use that faith, Father God, as we walk this walk in front of others. Help us to maintain our, our language and maintain our attitudes and, and be a, a blessing to those all around us. Let your words be on our lips when, when people say, how can, how can you live this way? Why are you happy? Why are you content with life? You know, when there's so many things wrong in this world, then we can tell them, Father God, about your goodness, that you make the difference in our lives. We have peace because of what your son Jesus did for us. We have love. We have joy, unspeakable, Father, because of what your son has done for us. Father, let us be ready and willing to share, not only with our resources, but also with our words. We love you so much, Father. We're looking forward to good results from this. Because you're such a good God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say it. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We're dismissed. You're so coming. I don't want to do that. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>